Shalom, everybody. Rabbi Edelstein here on a normal everyday Thursday with a normal everyday rabbi in three filmed on my back porch in my purple hat, my sunglasses, my flowered necklace, cup of coffee right here, my grill right here. Maybe we'll grill later. Um, you see the recycling bin in the background there. This is coffee. It's not a regular day. You know I would never do this. I'm not a silly guy. It's Purim. The truth is the craziness really hasn't started. This is coffee. I said it before. It's coffee. You don't start all that till later on in the day. And I'm going to tell you about that. But it is Purim. 5778. Rabbi Ian 3, that's me. Happy Purim. I got up early to hear the Megillah today, the book of Esther read. There are actually four rabbinic commandments done on this amazing rabbinical holiday, which is a very holy day. It really is. You read the Megillah, the book of Esther, which describes the events of the Purim story. That was read in synagogue last night, this morning as well. And all day you can catch Megillah readings in D.C. if you look around. Second special mitzvah of the day, Shalach Mano, sending delicacies, food, ready-to-eat food to your fellow Jewish people. Third, special Matanos Lev Yonim, gifts to the poor, extra tzedakah given to the poor. And the fourth thing in about, oh, counting down the hours, about eight hours, the festive su'uda, pora meal, rejoicing with food and with wine, if you like, or other drinks. That's when I'll get crazy. That's when we'll replace the coffee with, well, we'll see, other things, maybe. But in any case, it's a very special day, Purim. It's not really a silly day. It's a joyous day. It's an elevated day. And it is a day to be a little crazier, I guess, in a good, proper spirit, if it's a simcha shal mitzvah a joy of the mitzvah. Many people know that some people drink on Purim. The Talmud doesn't say to drink. It says to get spiced or perfumed. And, and they use that, yes, it's euphemistic for happy with the help of wine, but it has to be a sweet-smelling joy, not the opposite. And if a little bit wine or a little bit of wine, well, I sounded really Brooklyn there, a little bit of wine or a little more wine is good to help you feel beautifully spiced and perfumed, that's great. But if not, just rejoice with the beauty of the day. What is the beauty of the day? The eternal survival of the Jewish people, the eternity of the Jewish people. Though our enemies try to destroy us, Haman and Hitler, very eerie similarity between Haman and Hitler. That's for another time, maybe. Come to my house, we'll talk about it. But they're cut from the same cloth. Obsessive anti-Semites who had a plot to exterminate the Jewish people. They were the very worst of our enemies in history, though we've had many others. But we're here, and they're not. It's a day of the joy of being alive, the joy of being a Jewish person connected to meaning and purpose, believing in a world with purpose. In fact, the very name Purim, that was the lottery that, Hash that Haman cast to figure out the day to kill the Jews. It bespeaks his whole philosophy randomness. There's no order. There's no divine providence. That, that's the irony of the name Purim. We Jews believe in the opposite worldview. There's meaning and purpose, even if Hashem is hidden, like he is outwardly in, in the book of Esther, or in our own lives, or in the life of the Jewish people sometimes. Hashem seems hidden. There doesn't seem to be a pattern, but there is, and that's the special joy of Purim. It's so good to be alive. It's so good to do mitzvot on Purim and all the mitzvot bring us together in bonds of love and fellowship as a unified people, a people with a mission to be a light unto the nations, a light that will never burn out. Happy Purim. Have a wonderful day. Do good things. Think about what it means and how beautiful it is to be a Jewish person and to be alive on Purim. 5778. Happy Purim.